watchers, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I want to share uh, this little thing with you guys today uh, because, uh, to be honest, uh, I got this uh, full review a little while back and this was courtesy uh, of Gearbest and after playing around with it and having uh, some more insight, I, I realized that uh, the truth about this uh, scared the crap out of me and I, I want to share it uh, with you because it turns out this is actually a knockoff. This is a Casio uh, G-Shock GA710 model. So GB-1A is the model that this is supposed to be, but this is actually uh, a knockoff. And, and the reason why it scared uh, uh, me, this is a real one uh, that I ordered and paid for. Uh, is, the reason why it scared me is because it felt real and I had this in hand. I'm not naive uh, to G-Shocks. I've gone through at least eight or so on the channel, uh, but uh, you know, I thought it was real. The module, uh, when I, I compared with the official manual, it performs every single function as advertised, you know, in the right order uh, that the manual says it does. Uh, and it was thanks to some people who kind of just raised questions about whether some of these uh, Chinese retailers uh, have knockoffs uh, that I investigated further. And I want to sh uh, shout out also to G-Shock High Fashion. Uh, he, uh, the guy there did a, a video on comparing a real versus fake Mudmaster and took some cues and, and hints on that. Uh, and you know, another thing uh, that I can say about why it was so scary is because very few of uh, the described differences, the differences that I'm going to point out, are absolutely confirmatory. And without the real watch next to you, uh, it's nearly impossible to be 100% sure, you know, without that direct comparison. So I'm just going to go through uh, the differences between real versus fake, uh, you know, for education, for information out there for the public. So it kind of like a, I guess, a public service announcement type of thing here. Okay, so firstly, uh, just going from out to in, you know, superficial to deep, uh, the packaging. Now, the cardboard uh, box for the fake one, the fake stuff that's on the left here, the cardboard box actually disintegrated. But, you know, G-Shock cardboard should be, um, I, I guess, a, a separate compartment uh, at the top here for the manual. You know, if you know your G-Shocks, and then the tin goes underneath uh, this flap, right? So that, that's where the tin goes. Uh, on top of it, there should be a separate compartment. If it's not, that raises some questions, you know. But this one uh, was so, uh, I guess, in pieces by the time it got to me. Maybe that's a bit of a red flag uh, that it was just useless and I, I have thrown it away. So I can't uh, compare that. Uh, now, uh, the, the other thing is I'll say that there is a, a barcode uh, on the box here. Uh, now, this one is actually the precise correct model uh, with the module number 5522 here. But... It, I think it doesn't have to be. I've bought G-Shocks from authorized dealers right here in Perth, Western Australia, and they say that they kind of just stock boxes and, and put it in as they sell it. They don't necessarily have the right one allocated to the right model. So, so you know, I don't think that's a, a make or break thing. This one does happen to be have the correct model, so that, that gives a little bit of a layer of assurance there. Okay, now the, uh, I guess the talk about the manuals and stuff. Uh, so. Uh, the real G-Shock should come with this, but again, I, I, you know, the warranty kind of description. Again, I don't think that's make or break because I have bought real ones locally and they don't necessarily always throw this in. And it's not really necessary as long as you have the, the receipt from the store. You can take it back to the store. Uh, you know, I guess the international thing, you might need it if you're traveling and whatnot. But, but you know, locally, most of us will just take it uh, back to the store that we bought it from, right? Uh, the tags... Okay, one thing I'll say is that uh, the tags actually had, you know, very much uh, the correct stuff on it. You know, it's kind of just a copy uh, of the real thing, except this is the wrong module. Uh, so that, that's, again, maybe a bit of a red flag. So this one says speed hand on here. This watch doesn't have a speed hand. This refers to a different module, which actually they threw in the manual for. So that, that may be a bit of a red flag if it has the wrong features on there. Uh, at the back, apparently, all the real ones should have the right uh, model number with module there with a barcode. The fake ones may not have that uh, or often don't. So that's another kind of little bit of a clue, real versus fake there. Okay, so tags uh, on the side now. And uh, the manual, okay. This is the real manual, the right module number. This one came uh, with the wrong, uh, <laughs> the wrong module. And again, another slight red flag there, which I kind of ignored. I thought they just packed it wrongly. This is a different watch. Uh, in fact, this is a watch that has a speed hand. Uh, I do happen to have the, a real one of this module as well. So I'll just show you the, the slight differences that I've noticed here. So let's just 
Uh, hopefully you can see it. Okay, so, so real one on the bottom, uh, fake one on the top. And the crispness of the printing is not the same. So in fact, if you can see the bottom here, you can actually see the detail of that speed hand over there. But this one, because it looks like it's a photocopy, it, it's kind of lost that detail. You can't see that speed hand at all. And that these kind of little crispness differences carries out throughout the entire uh, manual here, which otherwise is exactly the same. It describes all the features. It's pretty much a, a kind of photocopy. Okay, so real versus fake. The real one uh, is definitely has a, a different level of, of crispness uh, in the printing here. Okay, so that's the manual. Now, uh, the tin. All right, the tin, uh, I don't have the, the exact same tin. So, you know, black versus gunmetal. So it's hard to compare Apple and Apple. I'm not really doing that here. But, uh, you know, G-Shock High Fashion, he had a gunmetal one to compare with real versus fake. And apparently, the fake one, uh, the words are silvered in. You can see that. You know, they're kind of filled in. Uh, whereas the real one is kind of more dark. Like, like in fact, like this black one is... is, is low contrast those words at the top but otherwise very difficult to tell the difference you know in terms of the real versus fake otherwise it is the you know, same dimension same feel uh, at the back here the real one does have a bit of printing i don't know whether that's a giveaway again you know none of these details can give you 100 percent confidence you know there's just a little bit of subtle things that built up okay so that's real versus fake in there i'm going to put it aside uh, so that's that's the the packaging except uh, i'll just mention one more thing about packaging uh, the fake ones uh, often do, do come with a sticker, a protective sticker over the top of the glass, uh, as well as potentially a sticker at the back. And this one did come uh, with those stickers. I, I, I peeled it off, but it did have a sticker at the back with a red line offset to one, one side that you might see in many different watches. Uh, but G-Shocks apparently shouldn't have that, certainly not with the red line and certainly never at the front. So if you see that, again, another thing that kind of... Uh, uh, raises concerns whether yours is a fake uh, it, you know still not 100 percent confirmatory it's just building up the case here okay so that that's really the packaging differences that i've described okay now let's look at the physical properties of the watch uh, the real one uh, weighs 72 grams i put this on a, a, a kitchen scale a precise kitchen scale and it comes up at 72 grams that is the official listed weight on Casio International website. This one is not. This one actually weighs 67 grams. Now, again, if you feel it in hand, no way you can perceive that difference unless you have the real one. There's very, very slight difference. You know, even I'm, I'm holding it here. I have to almost convince myself that the real one is slightly heavier and, and your hands have to be very, very sensitive to be able to perceive that by itself. In fact, I'd say that's impossible to perceive unless you put it on a scale and see it doesn't come up as 72 grams. Uh, dimensions wise, everything is identical. The width, the height of the watch, the, the, you know, the width of the strap, that's all actually uh, exactly the same except uh, the thickness. And the thickness is very difficult to be uh, completely accurate about because it depends on where you measure it up to because there's different bumps on the top here. But uh, the fake one you know, at the top is one millimeter thicker thanks to the different profile of the case back. So the real case back has a more flat profile. This one, the fake one, is a bit of a dome and hopefully you can appreciate it as I, particularly in the view from the side here, it's more of a dome. As you look at it straight on, it looks almost the same, but the, the fake one you can appreciate, hopefully, is more of a dome. All right, so that, that's physical property uh, differences here. Um, and, and the only one that's absolutely uh, you know, uh, something you can pick straight away is the dome. A uh, weight you can pick if you put it on a scale. Right, appearances. All right, resin. The resin appearances. The real one, look at that. It, it's, it's almost reflective. There's a glossiness to it. And actually, some people have commented they, they might think this is the fake one because it looks more plasticky. Uh, the truth is the fake one tries to be gloss, but, it, you know, it, it's, it's more of a satin rather than a real gloss. And a very different, uh, this model should be a gloss one. This one doesn't quite achieve it the real one is a reflective uh, gloss uh, you know how does the resin actually look well you can look at the the back side here you know absolutely identical in terms of the finishing and the feel of the resin uh, there's the, the printing at the top there is slightly different but again i'm not sure i can look at that and tell which one is real you know the, the actual feel and the finishing of the the naked resin is absolutely the same in hand here okay so that's that's quite scary as well how much they have been able uh, to do. All right, so 
Uh, other differences, uh, moving on to the next thing, the buttons. Now, this is another one that is more definite. Okay, if you look at the button, okay, let's put it side by side here. Okay, look at the real one on the left versus the fake one on the right. Now, firstly, I'll say the button uh, paint is kind of wearing off on the, the fake one. Uh, but more importantly, the number of knobs or little py pyramids across the button there is quite different. The real one has eight knobs across. And you can confirm that with pictures from Casio uh, official site. The fake one has about 11 knobs across, so it's more concentrated. Hopefully you can appreciate that quite easily. Let's put it uh, top and bottom uh, for the, the, the side buttons as well. So this one you can appreciate as well. It looks a lot more there. 11 across versus 8 across on the real one at the top in terms of the button uh, pattern there. All right, moving on to the next step then, dial. This one, uh, I thought, you know, another scary thing. This one, they, they tried to make it like steel. In fact, the indices actually do have a kind of a steel look, but the, the hands do not. They, they look, they actually look plasticky and they try, you know, like painted plastic, trying to make it look like steel. The real one, uh, you know, Casio have developed this resin technology that makes it look like steel. And this, these hands really do have a kind of a brush finish to it that make it look like steel uh, and the face as well has a brush finish that you know it's probably difficult for me to convey here but you know as i let the light shine across it hopefully you can see that brush finish uh, it's actually resin but they, they have a steel look this one they've tried to do it uh, but it, it is a very different effect the face they kind of get away with it the hands i think look nothing uh, like the real one but again you know if you just had this in hand and you just had pictures on Casio website to compare with you couldn't really tell, you know, it's not possible to tell without the real thing uh, next to you that this is a fake. All right, another thing, the display. Um, it's hard for me to probably tell this particular story. So this one, in most circumstances, has better contrast than negative display. This one, actually, right now on the camera, it looks not bad to me. But, you know, I've, I've looked at this at night, uh, compare it. Uh, in different lighting, the, the, the LCD of the real one has better contrast. Another thing that, you know, you, you can't tell, right? You know, this one looks okay. It looks exactly the same. It does all the same functions. It's just not the same exactly as the real thing. All right, function-wise, I've mentioned already, the module actually does everything exactly the same. And I'll show it to you now. Okay, timer, right? Wool time even swaps correctly. Five alarms, um, you know, stopwatch. And then back to time, all the same modes, all the same functions, but slightly different tone. So let me uh, show you the tone in this one. Okay, real one. Okay, the real one is lower pitched and shorter. The fake one is higher pitched and longer tone. So that, that's a different thing. You know, not something you can tell unless you compare it side by side. You know, it makes a tone. How can you know whether it's fake, right? I couldn't tell. The real alarm is slightly louder. So let me just show you the fake alarm. Okay. Okay, real one. Okay, I'm holding it the same distance to the camera. Hopefully you can appreciate the real one is a louder alarm, but it's actually the same pitch. The alarm is actually uh, the same pitch. Okay, now uh, in terms of the only thing I can tell you of how to absolutely be sure it is a fake is the directional change of the hands. And what I mean is, okay, when I go into setting mode, okay, the hands move out of the way, same as this one. Okay, the hands move out of the way. That's what it's meant to do. Uh, this one moves out of the way so that it's aligned on top of each other. This one doesn't quite do that. It kind of just goes to the 315 position. Now, that's not the make or break. The real make or break is that the real one, the hands will move backwards. Right? When you go back to time, this one, it doesn't move backwards. It always goes forwards across the whole time scale to get back to the time position. So that one is the only definite non-documented uh, directional change of hand. So you can't tell that by the manual. You have to tell that by experience of the watch. Okay, so that's the, the all the external things. I'm going to open the module up now because uh, I don't know whether it actually looks different inside and let's look at it together whether it's different. Uh, be back in a second. All right, guys, back with the modules now opened up. Now, firstly, I will, I will show you that the real one has a uh, rubber kind of seal around the 
the outside the, the fake one uh, doesn't and uh, on the actual thing I think there is a slight rubber seal here but certainly is is a different shape right doesn't have that indentation uh, that you can see uh, on the real one there okay that that part there there's an indentation so different orientation on the inside and immediately uh, side by side you can see the modules are different real one on the left okay and the the fake one on the right uh, and there's additional screws that I'm gonna have to open to actually get at the battery it looks like uh, real G-Shocks uh, all the ones that I've opened there there hasn't been additional screws you know there is a, this kind of cover that I have to lift off to get at the battery but uh, you know there are no screws I need to do uh, to get at that uh, at least on this module there isn't and this one the fake one does have more screws and of course it looks quite different in terms of uh, uh, the configuration so there you go guys uh, if you want another thing to be absolutely sure is the internal uh, looks very different so real one uh, on the left there fake one on the right so guys there we have it uh, the differences between a real and a fake GA700, GA710 model uh, on the left versus the right. Very, very scary to me how close they managed to do this knockoff. Uh, so just be aware these are out there and it's sometimes very difficult to tell and I would say nearly impossible to tell without the real one to compare with. So guys, there we go. I hope that's a useful video for G-Shock fans and Casio fans out there. Uh, guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. I put out new content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me and as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.